Oh man, welcome back old friend. It's been forever since I've made a Star Wars video. I became a Star Wars fan because of the Jedi and the Sith. Because of Luke Skywalker, Anakin Skywalker taking their laser swords uh, and ending uh, <laughs> solar system wide wars with levitation and laser swords. Yep, I'm one of those newbie fans that like, like, okay, I right, cool. All the space battles and the Mandalorian stuff and the Han Solos of the world, all that stuff is cool. The bounty hunting, cool, whatever. I get it. But I love Star Wars because of the laser swords and the levitation, the force. That's why I became a fan. I'm sorry. Saying all that, ah Ahsoka Tano, what a character. She has grown on me unlike any other character in the last decade that I've ever been a fan of. She started off kind of rough, but eventually, slowly but surely, you know, I started watching Cliff Notes of the Clone Wars. You know, I ended up watching like the final four episodes of the Clone Wars, her taking out Darth Maul, then her aging up and we getting to see her in Rebels. And then her meeting Luke and Mando and Grogu. It just, it's gotten to a point where even like her cameo episodes was just bringing me immense joy. And I wasn't understanding why. I'm like, oh, this character is clearly becoming one of my, one of my favorite characters in all of Star Wars, even up there with Luke and Vader. And it's to the point now where just, uh, I'm extremely biased. I'll be the first to tell you. When I, when this show was announced, I was like, yes, I'm going to watch this show. I don't even really even care what the story is going to be about. Just to be able to interact with this character again and see her progression in the full Star Wars story just brought me immense uh, psychological pleasure. Truly, truly it did. So here we are with the Ahsoka Tano show. It's clearly it's season five of Star Wars Rebels, not a show that I have a lot of experience with. I know all of the clear story points with Kanan Jarrus, Ezra Miller, and Grand Admiral Thrawn. And from the looks of the a storyline progressing in the Ahsoka show. That's what the story is looking to be about. It's about the progression of the training of Saban Wen, the apprentice of Ahsoka Tano, even though she doesn't seem to be force sensitive. So I don't know how that's going to work out. It looks like it's a debate among the fandom, whether she's force sensitive or not. Like I said, I didn't watch throughout all of rebels he clearly has skills with a lightsaber but she does not have the force within her she doesn't have the telekinesis or anything like that and then we also are finding a map we're finding a map again like and the sequel trilogy so we're gonna have to go and utilize this map to find grand animal thrawn and ezra miller because if you've seen the season final of Rebels, you know that they sacrificed themselves to save that planet. So cool. Excited to see that as well. Lightsaber fights. The first two episodes of Ahsoka Tana did not disappoint. And my favorite aspect of Star Wars whatsoever. I love Star Wars for the laser sword fights. Woohoo! Saban Wynn versus the Dark Side, the Apprentice of the Dark Jedi. Oh, that was so fun to see. Even though Saban Wynn doesn't even have any Jedi powers. He doesn't even know the Force. But, boy, she knows how to utilize the lightsaber, as we've seen in Star Wars Rebels. That was fucking awesome. Oh, I need more of that. I wouldn't be sad if they put a lightsaber fight in all eight episodes of Ahsoka. I swear I wouldn't. I need more of that, absolutely. The Sokatana kicking ass and taking names against all the droids that tried to take her out with her lightsabers. I love it. I love the choreography. I love the music that went along with it. I loved her facial expressions. It was all good. I need more of that, 100%. also love the fact that they're not treating Ahsoka as somebody that should be toyed with. Let's not forget that she is someone that has bested uh, the Sith Lord Darth Maul in one-to-one -one combat. She has taken on Darth Vader and survived in one-to-one -one combat. She has uh, interacted with Palpatine and survived. She is not to be fucked with. <laughs> and we cannot forget that. She is a master level force user. All there is to it. And that has been represented in this show perfectly so far. And I hope that continues. 
Now, y'all know my favorite thing on YouTube. A show as such as this can only be as good as how good the antagonists are. And the dark size users, Marin and Shin, are right on par. Maybe not as good as a Darth Vader, but definitely they're, they're good Star Wars villains so far. Two episodes in, I'm definitely understanding of their plight. Marin is a fallen Jedi who had to switch over to the dark side to survive. Purge of the Jedi Order, Order 66. Lee Shin is his apprentice. Very interesting character arcs and we have the opening sequence of them busting the man straight out of her prison after ahsoka de defeated her in battle i think when it's going to come down to it she is probably the main architect of the plans to break admiral thrawn from his prison because it looks like she's the brains of the organization and the sith users or kind of the brine and just the advisors you know she definitely seems to have an unhealthy infatuation with general thrawn i would even go as far as to say it seems like she's in love with him just almost like a savior type figure so it's cool can't wait to see how that unfolds as well i feel like they're going to betray each other to be completely honest oh dude just has that look about him he's all about power he doesn't really seem like the following type even though he used to be a jedi when that dark side gets a hold of you it's just i don't know man i don't think you're gonna be able to trust him as far as you can throw him that goes for the the man straight and that goes for his apprentice too i think he's gonna turn on both of them rather quickly i might add speaking of that apprentice i feel like she has a more interesting personality than he does i want to know how she got turned to the dark side i feel like she was probably an innocent force user that was just trying to hide during the imperial era and then she just happened to run into him instead of like a good force user and just got screwed into you know sinking into the dark side you know i mean you want to defend yourself huh well come on and train with me and i can teach you the ways to be able to defend yourself forever and there you go so he was able to take out sabine no problem obviously she's nowhere near ahsoka's level which you know i'm glad that she realized like uh yeah let me go ahead and run i'm not trying to fight her when she you know arrived after she had taken out sabine but yeah man i'm very excited to see where her character arc leads up i think she's going to be the one that survives the end of the series and she's probably going to get turned back to the light since that seems to be the popular thing to do with dark side users now who will remain nameless who has split the fandom in half who may or may not have fought Obi-Wan or Darth Vader. <laughs> Commander Hera, just a good buddy buddy's buddy to the main antagonist, Ahsoka. Cool to see her back in action. I feel like she kind of plays that Han Solo role. She's an expert marksman. She's good pilot. And just a cool character. Not really anything bad or good to say. She's just kind of there. Looks cool. Easy on the eyes. I'm not mad at it. I appreciate it clearly their supporting role to ahsoka and sabine's relationship to make sure that they can migrate back together so that ahsoka can f help fulfill sabine's training but i can appreciate that you know you gotta have your supporting characters to bounce off the main uh, protagonist's personalities to kind of propel the show along you know you gotta love uh, a good side character you can't have uh, a memorable show without best friends friends to <laughs> you know what i'm saying you gotta have that to push your show along man and commander harry definitely pushes that along and while we're talking about side characters let's go ahead and let's tackle sabine as well the mandalorian slash jedi that doesn't have any force powers definitely i was going in kind of questioning her ability to kind of go into that title role i know the show is called ahsoka but after the first two episodes the show is just as much her hers as it is ahsoka's especially with trying to show ahsoka that she needs to become a master and pass along her knowledge to sabine so that they can continue the legacy of uh, light side users not specifically jedi but at least you know keep people from going to the dark side so i'm really enjoying her character arc more so than anybody else in the show i'm very excited to see where her training takes her especially being able to combine her mandalorian heritage and training with the jedi training as well i'm very to see what kind of battle style that is going to incorporate so that is easily my most uh, exciting aspect 
aspect of the show. I cannot wait until episode eight so we can see where that final training pays off to see her take on the apprentice of Sith one more time to see if she has progressed enough to be able to take her down. Not kill her. I still feel like she's going to survive that at the end of the series, but definitely I want to see that character growth to see where we end up. And that's going to about do it for this one, man. I appreciate you watching all the way through. I want to know your thoughts of this show. I tell you what, man, it's weird for me. I didn't talk about The Mandalorian Season 3 at all. I'm sure some of you are wondering why. Because there was not one moment throughout that entire season where I felt like I needed to turn on the camera and really tackle any of those episodes. I love The Mandalorian Season 1 and Season 2. I feel like it definitely peaked at the end of Season 2. You know, it's not necessarily saying that it's bad now. It just, you know, I just wasn't super excited about it. But Ahsoka has brought me back. I'm super excited about Star Wars again. I Obviously, it's propelled me to want to start making content for it again. So I can promise you, if Ahsoka continues to make a amazing episodes like episode one and two, where you can definitely expect to see more videos from me. If it starts to suck, you know, I will will tackle that when it's time to cross that bridge. <laughs> I can't make any promises, but you know, the passions that drive this channel forward is when stuff is good. I can talk about stuff when it's bad too, but definitely for me, I'm more inclined to talk about it when it's great and that's gonna do it so if y'all would hit that like button for me i would really appreciate it uh, if you can go in and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any of my content also you, if you would consider supporting me on patreon i'll leave that link in the description below you know any kind of financial gain is uh, exceptionally helpful to the channel i promise you that because youtube doesn't pay anything as always you can follow me at youtube.com slash smart 79 i am also on facebook instagram and tiktok as always my friends i will see you guys on the next one i'll catch you guys later bye